Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part four, and I was trying to not say welcome back just because you might be watching all of these in a row, and it might be kind of awkward to be continually welcome backed, welcomed back, but there you have it. Uh, add together or concatenate two or more strings. So previously we saw the plus operator with numbers, which will allow us to add two numbers together, but we can also add two strings together to form a new string. So let's consider we have a variable first name, a variable last name, and we want a full name. So let's go ahead and paste this into our replet. And when this outputs, we'll see that it's full name, but it's, it's Robert Smalls, like all one word. And that's not completely accurate. So the way we're going to fix that is to demonstrate the way uh, a string concatenation works kind of, um, you know, with, with a practical example. So rather, actually, let's put them both on the same page. Uh, so rather than just saying first name plus last name, which is going to take the two strings and just smush them together directly, if we want a space in between them, all we need to do is just put a string which contains a space in between those, so it'll format it properly. Now when we run this, we'll see that without a space versus with a space. So just a practical example, let's go ahead and look at the coding challenge now. We're going to complete a function that takes in two parameters, both will be strings, and returns the two strings concatenated. Your function should create a new variable, assign it to an expression which will add together or concatenate the input strings, then return that variable. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function, add together two strings. Now, it looks like they just want us to add them together, no need for a space. Uh, and it looks like the second one that we're going to be up to will have a space. So for the first one, we're going to follow basically what we showed in this section of the documentation. Um, to be sure, I'm not going back to the documentation as much during these videos, but the idea here is that instead of all the challenges being at the bottom, the challenges pretty much link up to the documentation uh, like in lockstep. So each time you see documentation, the coding challenge right after that refers to that documentation. So in case you're curious, that's what's going on there. So let's jump to this coding challenge. We'll follow the same pattern, add together two strings, and let's put together our test cases. So create a result variable, variable result is equal to an expression which adds together string one plus string two. Now you saw me just put a space there and that's superfluous. This says the exact same thing as this, but I would, uh, I would proffer that this is easier to read. So that's what I'm going to do. Finally, I'm going to return result if I can ever find the keys. And okay, so this one should be computer and this one should be engineering. So if we run both of these and we see computer and engineering, we are in increasingly, uh, uh, there we go, good shape. We said it once. All uh, right, let's run the tests. And we are in beneficial contour. Oh, that one doesn't really work. Anyway, in case you're curious what's going on there, if you haven't seen the previous videos, these are uh, synonyms for good. And these are synonyms for shape. Uh, for those of you playing the home game, I say we are in good shape at almost the end of every single video, probably in module one and module two. So we decided to switch it up to module zero. Now we're going to complete a function that takes in two parameters. Both will be strings representing a first and a last name and returns a full name string. Your function should create a new variable Assign it to an expression which will add together or concatenate the first and last name strings with a space in between, then return that variable. Below is an example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed a described function, create full name. So we've got two legendary programmers here, Devin Cook and Ada Lovelace. Um, to be short, Devin Cooks is a friend of mine, but I think he's a pretty good programmer, so he's in here. Ada Lovelace is one of the original programmers. Um, very, very cool history on her. Um, Devin's history is pretty cool too though. So let's go ahead and copy the function stub, paste it in here for create full name, and then we'll grab our two test cases and put those below. Now, mm, no, we won't go into that just yet. So create a full name variable. So this is the first time that we're not creating a result variable. We're actually creating a variable that's named something specific. So we'll say full name. Now to be sure, it doesn't really change anything. The test cases will run the exact same if we call this result or if we call this x or anything, but calling it full name gives us a hint, and by us we mean us in three months when we look back at this code, or teammates, partners, tech leads, things like that. So we'll say full name is equal to first name plus 
the space in between plus last name. Then we'll return full name. If we run this and we see Devin Cook and Ada Lovelace, we are, oh uh, no, uh, yes, that is definitely not supposed to be a colon. That is supposed to be a semicolon. So if we run this now, oh, let's go back because we want to go over the errors. So punch this in and let's have a look. So uh, eval machine syntax error, unexpected token colon. Hmm, that's relatively simple. So if we look at it and we see that vmjs837, none of this really does a lot for us in terms of what's actually going on, but this does. Line 13. And it actually outputs the, the actual line that's in question and points to the error. So this is a nice robust error message, and we can easily identify that this colon should be a semicolon. So when we run this, we should see Devin Cook, Ada Lovelace, we do. Let's go ahead and copy this function, put it into the input window, and find out what version of good shape we're in. Excellent. We are in, uh, I messed up, beneficial. I think we did beneficial. We are in convenient format. Cool. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.